Okay, so having played with Redbubble and putting it up to Redbubble and having it work on these different options, right? I knew I liked kind of the off-white background. especially again of the canvas. So I'm thinking maybe something like that as a composite, but why don't I start by just painting in a background with the gradient tool. And I'm thinking, well, let's do something weird. Something like this, and then I'll go across it. This is at 76%. So I just like that. Let's see. Then maybe I'll do another layer, put white behind it. Um, let's find some texture. So I go to Google, do an image search, and I'm going to do a texture of wood grain. Well, these all look very fake. So I'm going to put in vintage. You can always trust that for designers. We love that term, vintage. Google needs to come up with a way of doing image searches that flag uh, watermarks. So I'm going to put in free. <laughs> so that doesn't usually help all, help all that much. And I want large. Yeah, this would be really, oh, that, if, this, if this works, this would be great. It's through Pinterest, so you never know. Open image in new tab. Yes. All right. So when you find something like that, as a designer, you save that to one of your folders. You, know? and you might go back to that over and over again for different jobs. So let's bring that in, because I was thinking kind of like a, a wine barrel or something. Oh yeah, lovely. Got to be careful where those vertical lines fall. Already this is a cool poster. All right, so that's just using it straight. If I layer my um, gradation above it, I can play with opacity, right? Tone it down a little bit. I can play with soft light, which warms it up a little bit, and that's nice. I can play with pin light, but soft light it is. And now I'm gonna do a different gradient fill on a new layer, and I'm gonna make this one a rainbow. Something pretty crazy. I'm going to go from top to bottom. Let's see. And this is to play with what's called color separation, right? So this time I'm going to go from bottom to top, just a slight angle. Yeah, I liked it better top to bottom. Okay. Now maybe at a very low opacity. I'll do it one more time at a slightly different angle. Because you can paint gradients on gradients at different opacities. Okay. So you see that difference. It deepened it a little bit. Now, just like I did with my other gradient, I could play with layer styles. And that will bring that color in a little bit. Not as nice. You do it with pin light. You can do it with overlay. You know. But instead, I want something that's a little bit more printing savvy. I could take the opacity down and just kind of dull it, but then it just looks blurry. So what I'm going to do is actually convert this into CMYK dots, like this full spectrum color would actually be printed. 
So before I move on with that, let me explain a little bit about CMYK dots, and I'm going to save this. And so if you go to your assignment sheet and you go to assignment eight and you click on the link underneath it, you'll get to this lovely Google Slides presentation about CMYK color separation. CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And there are bunches of ways you can layer these four inks together on white paper to get the thousands of colors we can see. But when you use a magnifying glass, because ink can only be one color, right? You will see the dots because all mixing happens through dots per inch. And it just has to do with the pattern that the dots are, are laid down in. So this is called a half tone pattern the very clear defined mechanical dots that are precise sizes. And that will give you the best color mixing. This is more of a diffuse pattern and it's not using dots, it's using little X's. Sometimes that will happen. This is just using opacity. And so on the bottom here, you see a lot of different mixes of half tones. So color separation with Binday dots is an artifact of professional four color offset lithography printing. So pre-digital. So if you wanted to print a photograph in a newspaper, you had to convert it into this mechanical process of dots. It's named after uh, an illustrator and printer, Benjamin Day. That's why we call them Binday dots. It's similar to pointillism which was a late 19th century post-impressionism technique by Paul Signac and Georges Seurat, where they just painted with pure color and optically let the colors mix from a distance. So depending on the effect, color, and optical illusion needed, small color dots are closely spaced, widely spaced, or overlapping. Also, the dots are in different sizes. And sometimes the dots are reversed, like white dots on black versus black dots on white. So the two most common ways that a printer a standard printer, not a lithography press, will separate out the inks in that printer to print your digital artwork is either through index color, that's the most common, it's called the diffuse sand pattern, which is made to look more random, but as long as the dots can be small enough, which they can be at these high density printers, like more than 2000 dots per inch, it will mix the colors and you won't really even be able to tell where the dots are. But then the older process is half tones. And this is what uh, dot matrix printers used. And what's nice about half tones is if you let the dots be a little bit bigger, it has this really nice vintage look. And the four color CMYK color separation process using half tones is what's most often used in professional printing and lithography. Now, why I like it is it reminds me of old printing especially old comics, right? So making the individual color separation dots, the DPI or dots per inch professional printing visible is a nod to print colors history in the 20th century. And it's nostalgic, it makes it retro, and it shows that even though you're using digital art tools in the 21st century, you're, you're hip to where all of this came from, right? So this is a contemporary illustrator Again, we're using Wonder Woman, carrying on from the digital coloring slides. And they've made this image look just a lot more interesting. From a distance, it looks like just flat color. But when you see it up close, you see that those flat colors are mixed from the Binday dot separations, at least in all of her skin tones. And even just that little detail makes it a lot more visually engaging. Here we have uh, the movie that came out recently, Into the Spider-Verse, and they heavily use bin day dots and color separation. This is just one panel to add that kind of comic book retro cool to it. And here's a nice link to just an amazing article. So if you want to explore this on your own at some point, that is just a really generous article that the, uh, the makers, it was Sony of uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, it's going to take a while to load. They just give all kinds of digital concept art and background and just all the digital art that was involved in the making of the show, which is really neat to see and can be inspiring for your final projects. So these are great examples. You see the Binday dots used there. 
You see the color separation dots used in the background here and on the, the figure illustration. This is very much like what we're doing right now. See the Binde dots there. So now that you know what it is, you'll probably notice it a lot more. Even in this, you see how they're using it as shadows and reflections, kind of break up the space. So if you like that movie, a lot of it has to do with understanding this printing process. Unfortunately, I have a lot of colors and a lot of slides. All right, so this is what it actually looks like. This is what you see in a printed magazine, even today, right? If you zoom in on just a tiny bit of it, it looks like this, because even gray is optically mixed out of these four inks, three colors and black. And the reason that it looks gray instead of just looks like a mess and muddy is because the, the dots are offset from each other. They don't just land right on top of each other and give you like a gray mush. They optically mix so you're seeing a little bit of each color in every place. For color printing, it just uses more of the color. So a little snapshot from these red and yellow leaves looks like this. Now, what I need you to know as competent digital artists is what the screen angles are for these different inks in order to get them to offset and create what are called Gaussian roses instead of just being a mess. So the angles are always this, unless you're being really experimental. Black is always set at 45 degrees. That means you take one of these lines of dots, you tilt it at 45 degrees. Right? And that's because the black is usually the thing that's most prominent, right? And so at 45 degrees, that's going to be the most visually appealing. The yellow is most commonly going to be at zero degrees or 90 degrees. It's the same thing because that's the one that's most distracting. If the dots are just running straight up and down on horizontals and verticals, it's not as visually dynamic. So you use your lightest color for that. So if yellow is at zero and black is at 45, the cyan and the magenta have to be fit in between those. So they are 30 degrees off of black because you don't want to interfere with black. So 30 degrees off of black is 75 degrees for magenta, and sometimes these are swapped, and 15 degrees for cyan. They're also 15 degrees off of the yellow. So 15 degrees off of zero is where cyan is, and sometimes they're swapped, and 15 degrees off of 90 degrees is where magenta is. So this slide will help you study. You want to memorize those. They will come in handy. So here we have my digital coloring handout, right? So once you have this beautiful digital coloring, this be beautiful spot illustration or logo type or whatever, or type design, if you want to give a little bit of that retro cool, you can separate those colors into CMYK. And you can see those little Gaussian roses there. And it makes it feel that much more finished. Come on, next slide. Maybe that's it. No. Yes. Okay, good. So I'm going to show you how to do that within Photoshop. Now, we're going to pick just one layer to do it on. So to make it really clear, I'm going to... Actually, I'll combine these three layers. So let me just tone this one down a little bit. There we go. That will work. Good. So these are all affecting each other. All right. So what I'm going to do is now take these three layers and merge them. So I go to the top most visible layer and I say Option, Layer, Merge Visible. And it's, you can just do it with a rainbow spread like this you'll learn it. Okay, then I'm going to select all of it and copy it. So select all, command A, copy, command C. Now I'm going to make file new, a new Photoshop file. It's a bit of a pain, but trust me, we're going to call it CMYK. And then we're going to paste it in, edit, paste. Okay. 
Now we're going to